In a recent development, the Bar Council of India has allowed foreign lawyers and law firms to practice in India. But the picture is not all rosy. There are certain exceptions and conditions placed. Let us understand all about this and about the Bar Council of India with a question of the past year prelims paper that is of 2022. So without further ado, let's move into the video. Let's first understand who can practice law in India, which advocates are allowed to practice. Now, this is allowed by a certain act of the government, which is known as Advocates Act. And this act is of 1961. So, this act says that an advocate can practice law, provided it has registered itself with the BCI or the Bar Council of India. You need to register yourself with the Bar Council of India and only then can you practice law. However, in a new notification that is given by the Bar Council of India, we have seen that now foreign lawyers as well as law firms can now practice law in India. Now, there are certain exceptions that are placed. Okay, so it is not that they can practice as they wish. There are certain conditions that are placed. So, what kind of exceptions and conditions that are placed? Let us understand. So, firstly, as we know that they have to be registered to practice. So, yes, registration with the BCI is very important. They need to be registered with the Bar Council of India provided that they are also practicing law in their country, in their own country. So if there is any US lawyer who wants to practice in India, they have to be a lawyer in their own country and then they can probably register themselves with the BCI to practice. However, here it is important to know what are the type of practice they can do, what kind of work they can do here. So here it is important to understand that they are permitted to work or be associated with drafting of certain corporate kind of works. Okay, so drafting in terms of some transactional work, corporate work with corporate firms in terms of mergers, in terms of certain uh, ventures. So this is when they can work, they are permitted, they are allowed to work. Further, here it is important to know that they are not permitted. They are not allowed mainly for conveyancing of property. So what do you mean by conveyancing of property? That means transfer of pro property from one party to another. Conveyancing is transfer of property. They are not allowed to be associated or permitted to allow for the conveyancing of property. What other things are they allowed? What are the other exceptions or conditions? Here we see that they are not allowed to be uh, uh, present in the court or tribunal or before any regulating authority. They are not allowed to be appearing in the court. Now that they have registered with the BCI, can they practice Indian law? Here it is important to understand that they are not allowed to practice Indian law because they are foreign firm, they are a foreign, they are foreign lawyers. So they are not allowed, not permitted to practice Indian law even after registering with the BCI. Here let us understand then what is the significance of this move. Now that we are allowing foreign lawyers and law firms to practice in India, what is the significance of the move? So, what does the Bar Council of India see? Now, over a decade, the Bar Council of India did not allow the foreign law firms or foreign lawyers to practice in India. But their stance, their, their mind has changed because there are certain benefits that we can see and they are talking in terms of the corporate side. They are talking with regard to the ease of doing business. So, here we see that the significance of this move is mainly 
for the flow of the foreign direct investment or the FDI. So here with regard to corporates trying to have their firms in India, here with a change of uh, contracts or mergers or the ventures, this can be easily done by them. This can be easily, uh, the process can be very simpler. Further, even India will be a hub of international commercial arbitration. That means now we're going to allow different foreign firms, foreign lawyers to come in and settle some agreements with regard to the work that they are allowed to. So again, it will be a hub of international commercial arbitrations. And here in the BCI says that it is not going to harm the legal processes in India. It's not going to harm the legal process or the system in India because these firms, these foreigners that are allowed in India, this is going to be well, very well regulated. It's going to be in a controlled manner. It's going to be limited. So the Indian law firms, the Indian lawyers need not worry of this new change. Now, it is important for your UPXC exam to understand about the Bar Council of India, more so because we have seen a past year question asked in 2022, which we're going to see in a while. So here you let's understand about the Bar Council of India, which is a statutory body. So when I'm saying it's a statutory body, that means it is coming from an act. Now, what act? It is mentioned again on the board that is the Advocates Act of 1961 that this body was created, right? So what are the functions of this particular Bar Council of India or the BCI? Here, it mainly regulates. The main function is regulating. What does it regulate? Be it law firms, be it in terms of law education, universities, Right. It also sets standards for these universities that have a, allow a law degree. OK, so setting standards. In terms also of professional conduct, all of this is what the functions of the BCI include the Bar Council of India. Here it is also uh, going a little a step further where it allows certain funds it allows for creation of funds so that it looks after the interest. It protects the interest of the advocates in India. So again, by creating a fund system, providing financial assistance to the advocates for the welfare of the advocates. So these are the main functions looking after the laws, firms, advocates, looking after the law, education, law universities in India is what the Bar Council is. Here, it's important to also understand the composition of the BCI. What is the composition? So here we have certain elected members. Okay. Now, what are the elected members? They are coming from different state Bar Councils. So we have number of states. From there, we have certain elections happening. And from there, we have certain members that are coming. So state bar councils and this is for the term of five years. We also have the members that is the Attorney General of India as well as the Solicitor General of India. So these also are the members of the Bar Council of India. Now let us look up for the MCQ that was asked in UPSC prelims 2022. So here's the question that was asked in UPSC prelims 2022. With reference to India, consider the following statements. Government law officers and legal firms are recognized as advocates, but corporate lawyers and patent attorneys are excluded from recognition as advocates. The second statement, bar councils have the power to lay down the rules relating to legal education and recognition of law colleges. Which of the following statements are correct? Now, let us go to the second statement because here we just saw that the bar councils, yes, have the power to lay down rules. They regulate the law universities. They regulate the law colleges. So, yes, the second statement is correct. What about the first statement? Let us go through that as well. 
government law officers and legal firms recognized as advocates? Yes, because if they are registering themselves with the BCI, definitely they will be advocates. But the second part of this, corporate lawyers and patent lawyers. Corporate lawyers, yes, they are not uh, recognized as advocates. Why are corporate lawyers not uh, considered as advocates? Because they have to give up their sanad. Okay, this is like a, a legal, you can say license, like a charter that they have to give up if they want to perform or be as corporate lawyers. They, they cannot practice um, uh, or they cannot get the enrollment of an advocate. However, in terms of patent lawyers, yes, they are lawyers. They are mainly looking after the licensing of patents, everything about patents. So, yes, they are advocates. They are enrolled or registered with the BCI as um, patent attorneys and they are advocates. So, although corporate advo corporates are not advocates, patent attorneys are advocates. So, this first statement is wrong and that is why our answer to this is only two that is option B.